All right, so let's talk about the U.S. session. Here's how I treat New York. I think New York's gonna be, for me at least, is a lot simpler. So New York session, we're looking for really two things. Uh, the first trade is a is a continuation trade. Uh, second is a uh, reversal trade. That's it. The only other possible thing that you can get that would be worth trading um, would be if you get like a type one type one setup that uh, essentially has been waiting the whole day to set up where you would have that scenario where I talked about earlier of having accumulation um, pretty much in in the um, in the London session and then the actual move happens in the New York session but primarily this is literally all that you're looking for because that's the majority of the time that's what you're gonna get some type twos or something but those are just very far few in between the continuation trade by the way ends up being very similar or pretty much the same thing as a type three trade that happens in new york the only reason why i call it a continuation trade is because it's continuing the original move that happened from the london session and so what ends up happening here is let's say here is uh your your Asian box you have your your move back and forth or whatever let's say you get a huge move like this in London right and then let's say around 7 o'clock 7 a.m. you get a push down or a retracement at the beginning close to the beginning of the New York session let's say anywhere from eight to nine or so you find yourself like down here or it could be down here right you're not at the what you presume at that time the high of the day and you're not at the low of the day you're like literally in the middle and I don't mean just like the middle of the Asian range but just in general, you're like in the middle of where the high and the low is, right? You're too, you're too high off, off the high of the day to come back and do this, right? And you're too low that you're not going to come back and do this. So in, those, in that scenario, what you're looking for is you're looking for a continuation trade to basically continue the move that happened in London. So basically a continuation of this move. So it would look like basically this, and you would enter here. The setup itself, is, it's very apparent when you see it. You'll see what I'm talking about. Because there's, there's literally no other, you know, kind of uh, trade option that you would have. So that's one setup. The other setup would be the reversal trade. And, I mean, honestly, that's just all that is. Is literally, let's say you have your Asian range... And same thing you have price action doing this doing this let's say you get a type 1 set up here during London and then it works its way down and then by the time you get to the US session you're basically at the low of the day and you're just looking for a reversal trade typically what you find with the reversal trade is that they usually go straight to the 50 and that's it so these reversal trades here typically give you about 20 pips in the US session the continuation trades typically give you more but in the New York session your goal is to get at least 20 pips because that's typically what you get if you're trading it back to the 50 EMA which is where it goes to always and the only other thing that I that I talked about here would be um, whenever you get the uh the setup of like having you know basically sideways 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 you get to the u.s session and then it goes so those are the are the real three main setups when you talk about the reversal trade it's basically treat it like you are treating a w or an m pattern 
that you would be trading in London session in the sense of like it's got the same rules, right? You're looking for a W, you're looking for second leg railroad track, star pattern, the same exact thing. Pull back, everything's exactly the same. You're just identifying basically either the low of the day or the high of the day if you're trading an EB. That's it. And you're trading this back to the 50. On the continuation trades, what you get on those are typically going to be uh, railroad tracks, star patterns, as like your entry. Because you, you only get, it's like a type 3 where you only get a one-legged move you know so it just goes down so this right here is either going to be a, a quarter wood railroad track star pattern so you treat it the same way as you would like trade a type 3 usually you're going to get a confirmation of like a pinning to the 50 or 200 or something like that so let me show you some examples of what they look like all right so what did we have what do we have the previous week? What kind of cycle did we have the, the previous week? Right, a trending cycle, yes. And how about, let's see. What about the week before that? So this week here, what was that? Muhammad, trending cycle. Yeah, so this is not, this is not a market maker cycle. Why is this not a market maker cycle? Tuesday. Yes. You can't have a midweek reversal on Tuesday. Tuesday ain't the middle of the week. Right? Tuesday you had a push. But the push on Tuesday is what actually started the, the trending cycle. You get what I mean? So there's no, um, there's no, uh, whatchamacallit? There's a push on Tuesday that went all the way up, which is fine, perfectly fine. Um, but it just kept going up. It didn't reverse. You know what I mean? So if you have a big push up on Tuesday and it's a market maker cycle, the reversal is going to come either Wednesday or Thursday. You wouldn't have another push up on Wednesday like this. You know, the the thing that you would have is something like this and then come down and then down and then down. And so that would give you like the um that would give you the uh the market maker cycle. So essentially two trending cycles back to back. Right? And it looks like this was probably a reset here and then came down to a peak formation uh, peak formation low it's about 400 pips or so so if it's 400 pips or so that's definitely going to be um, probably pretty close to the, um, the what you gonna call it the peak formation high or three times ADR, exactly, Muhammad, yes. Like three times ADR, yeah. So, all right. So what do we have here so far? We're coming into Monday's, Monday's, um, what you call it, New York session. What's your first initial thought? When you walk in, you see this. It's a reversal. It's got to be, right? Because it's already at trading already at the very bottom, the very low. So what do we need? If it's a reversal, what do we need? So, I mean, I, I kind of already see like, I don't know, when I, when I think about it, this I see this as the first leg here. I mean, this is like another second leg right here, right? This what I, this, at least that's what I see. You got one, two, three, four, five, or one, two, three, four, five candles between the first and second leg. Second leg is a railroad track, but it's super like, you know, it's already very late. 
you got some good divergence on the TDI. So that's a good thing. But what would you need, essentially? What's your tr entry trigger, essentially, to get into this trade as a buy? <laughs> I thought, right? Okay. But what what problem does this cause now? Or does it cause? Yeah, so a lot of... There's some problems with it, number one. So here's here's the problems that I that I can see is... Number one, like you guys mentioned, right? We've traveled already three times ADR, right? So that's one. So I'm not really, I'm not really expecting like more pushes high because I know that there has to be some kind of retracement first, right? And so, do you remember what I told you guys about the retracements normally go to where? When price gets too separated from the 200, it goes back home to the 200, right? And this is on the one hour, by the way. So, so that's one thing, right? The second thing that you have that complicates it is the fact that, yeah, you had a big pull, bullish candle to let you know, hey, we're not going to be here anymore. But then you have basically like two roadblocks that you have to go through. Now, I'm not saying that I can't go through them because it can, absolutely can. But the problem is that they're there to begin with. Um, what else do I see that's wrong? Oh, and you, you would need, definitely, you would need a pullback, right? There's no, there's no way about it. You would definitely need... Um, some kind of a pullback, you know, maybe here or so. And then to make this work, you ideally would probably take it somewhere here like this. Because going to the middle won't give you a two to one. Unless you shorten your risk on here like that. And even now that's 17 pips still. Now, I know somebody who said that they would uh, take it on the, who said they would take it on the, uh, oh my god, on the thing, on the star pattern. Yeah, I would have taken it on the star, on the star pattern, or morning star, right here. So, if you're telling me that you would get in to the trade something like this, then that would probably change like that changes everything right because even just going to the 50 gives you a two to one it's not going to give you 30 pips but it gives you the 20 that you would you know essentially get you know what i mean on a trade so that trade would be possible yes but a different one of up here would not be possible unless you have a pullback and like a real deep pullback. Does all that make sense? So this only works if, uh, like Sam said, that of taking it, you know, up down here. It's the only way that this would work. Because anything after this, anything that you get after the 50 is a gift. It's free money. Right, it's free money after that. So let's see if you actually get a pullback or not. You get a pullback, but it's not that deep. Yeah, that pullback's not gonna be enough to get you into the trade. You needed like another like four pips or so. So that, that wouldn't have gotten you into the trade. Interestingly enough here you got a railroad track here into the middle of the range. Would anybody see that as a continuation trade? Um, I mean the TDI is kind of like here, you know. But I think that 
if you were to take an uh, Sam's trade here like this, I mean that would have that would have been a three to one risk to reward ratio right after this uh, this star pattern. Yeah, so I mean, I think it would have made sense. 15, 15 pips. Where would you take this to, by the way? If you were to trade something like this. Low of the day. Um, yeah, I mean, that would work to get 2 to 1. So, low of the day here. You can get to yesterday's low of the day, which is this yellow line here. Um, or, you know, ultimately the 800 EMA. See, so look, you already made it past, you already passed the freaking 200 on the one hour. Yeah, so if you look here, I mean, what's, what's the first thing that comes to mind right now? If you're not at the bottom, you're not at the top, you're in the middle, right? You just had an aggressive move from, um, whatchamacallit? from London it looks like you're about to I don't know it looks like you're pinging to the 50 actually but right Ward you, you'd be looking for more than likely a continuation trade is what you'd be looking for if you take away the um, the boxes you can see this actually pinned the 50 there so what are we looking for as far as the uh, to get into a trade here? Well, I guess that answers it. <laughs> the speed was fast instead of slow. But yeah, I guess that answers it. Look, a bearish candle with a pullback. So that pullback went all the way back up to here. So anywhere here, you're within a 13 pip stop loss, and then you're well over a three to one risk to reward ratio. So you pin to the 50, you have um, a shift candle, a pullback on the next candle, pin to the 50 here, so does everybody see where, where we're getting this at? Or where we're getting this from? It's one thing you're already like all the way up here. Yeah, so I mean, you're trading at, you know, pretty much what the high of the day, right? The only possible trade that's tradable that you would take from this is what? Right, you already have, I mean, you're already all the way at the top here, the TDI, right? You actually have divergence also on the TDI as well because this keeps going higher, but this is actually lower. So you have divergence. Um, what do you need? <laughs> what else do you need? Or better yet, where's the first leg at? Or do you have a first leg? Start of the New York session. Okay, so. So this right here would be considered like the first leg. And so we need, somebody said, what, five candles, right? So one, two, three, four. So we need one more candle to make it five. Uh, let's see. That's five candles. And shit, there's, there's your railroad track. Does everybody see that? So that's your railroad track. You still got divergence going on on the TDI. So the question becomes, is this a viable trade or not? Like, where would you take it to? Um, I mean, the first target obviously would be the 200 EMA. That would be a two to one. Ideally though, you would want to pull back Don't know if you'll get one or not, but if you get a pullback, it'd be more like a, I think almost like a three to one. Yeah. 
So if you get a pullback of three to one, if you don't get a pullback, it's still a two to one to the two hundred. Those are your two different setups. Yeah, a pullback would definitely make it a better, way better trade. Um, I think the important thing that I would keep in mind is that. If you get a two to one risk reward ratio to the 200, because that would definitely be a, a good trade. Remember that the one thing that you can control, that you can always control, is your risk. Whether you're whether you're saying, hey, this is too much of a risk, or whether saying, hey, instead of using, let's just pretend that you're that you normally trade a standard lot size. And let's say instead of, hey, if I'm going to risk more, let's say five more pips, right? If I'm going to risk five more pips on this trade than I normally would, then instead of trading a standard lot size, why don't I trade a, let's say, a 0 0.70 instead? You know? And so lower your risk that way. So if you do end up losing the trade, it kind of evens out the risk that you took. Like it would be like taking a risk anyways of like, you know, 15 pips. Does that make sense? Because that's the only thing that you can control literally is your risk. How much you're, how much you're risking per trade. Well, let's see if we get a pullback anyways. So no, no pullback. And the question is, do we just go to the 50? And that's it, or what? So it does end up going to the 200. All right, so that's, that was that one. And what is this, Thursday? So what would we be looking for on a Thursday then? I mean, you're not at the top, you're not at the bottom, you're in the middle again, right? So look for like another continuation trade again. So now you're just waiting to see if you get essentially like a pattern to trade, right? Like a, um, whatever. Um, um, is this a trade setup here? What would be the trade setup actually? So we have a, con it would be, you'd be looking for a continuation trade. So what, you're saying this would be like a railroad track and is this the pullback that you're getting into? So something like that, 10 pips and where would you take it? Where would you take this to, by the way? That'd be a four and a half to, uh, yeah, almost a four and a half to one. So would everybody else think this is a good trade setup or what? You get stopped out, man. You took a loss. So you took a loss. I know, right? It's sad. It's like the first loss. That looks so perfect. Didn't it look so perfect? So what's the lesson learned from that? Even as good as the trade looks, right? Even as good as the trade looks, I think this is a good example of how, how good of a trade would look, right? When you have pins to the 200, you have a railroad track, you got a pullback, all that good stuff. And yet still, you end up losing the trade. You know, it's a 10 pip loss. I mean, you so far you're up 30, 39, 45, right? So 45, 39, and 30. So you were up 114 pips for the week, and then you just lost 10 pips. So you're down to 104. I'm sorry. Wait, wait, wait. The point is, who cares? You lost a trade. Oh well. It's one loss. It ain't the end of the world. What you don't want it to do is you don't want it to control your emotions for the next trade setup. So you don't want it to let that control 
your emotions for the next trade setup. If it's the next day or whenever it is. Right. So, all right. So here's the beginning of the U.S. session on, what is this, Friday. So it's Friday. Beginning of the U.S. session. This is what it looks like. What would be the ideal scenario here for a trade setup? Here, let me play. This is what, only 8.15. Let's play another one. played a little bit too much. I forgot to slow it down. So here, this is what, what is this? 1015. What's the only possible thing we could trade? A reversal, right? That's it. It's the only thing we can trade. Do we see a first leg, right? This would be the first leg. And I don't know, whatever comes after this may be the second leg. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, we got plenty of candles in between, right? So what's the next candle here? Railroad track. So what are we looking at? Where would you take this trade? I mean, a two to one would basically be like here. Yeah, exactly. Where it'd be basically the to the 200, 800 EMAs would give you a perfect two to one risk reward ratio on it. What would be great if you if you were to get a pullback on the next candle, and you can lower your risk by a little bit. You know, maybe over here or something. I don't know. Maybe to 13, 14, 13 pips or so. Now that risk reward ratio is a two and a half to one to get to the, you know, to get to the uh, 800 or the 200 or whatnot. Right? So it's either a pullback. If you get a pullback, it's a better entry, saves you a few more pips, gives you a better risk reward ratio. If you don't take, or if you don't get a uh, a pullback, you can still get a two to one if you take it to the 200 or the 800 EMA. Does this make sense? All right, let's see what we get. And uh, we kind of, I wouldn't call that divergence, but we definitely have a hook here on the first um, on the first leg on the TDI here. So yeah, you end up making it. You actually get more, up to like 44. So you end up getting another, let's say, 30. So you end the week positive 134 pips. And this is just one pair. So this is just one, this is just one pair, one of the main pairs, GU. Okay, do you have a way better understanding of how to trade the U.S. session? That was the whole point of doing this, right? So do you have a better... A sense of how to trade the U.S. session now. Guys, if you need any more help or you like the content that we provide on this channel, come on over to the FXN Masterclass. It's available right now. What you get essentially is a lifetime membership, a full mentoring course, an advanced course. You get the Blue Summit videos, weekly Q&A sessions every Sunday, uh, group session archives, which that by alone has about 100 hours of content, weekly analysis videos, midweek analysis videos, MT4 and MT5 indicators, a customized trading journal so you could actually journal your trades every day, and then a backtesting journal that you can use to backtest and collect all of your data, not to mention a mentoring private chat, guys. So all the information is in the link in the description if you want to join now. We look forward to seeing you there, guys, and take care of yourselves.